The plain doll we meet in The Hunter's Dream is by far the most iconic of Bloodborne's cast of characters, outside perhaps only the hunter himself. You will hunt beasts, and I will be here for you to embolden your sickly spirit. The character shares a voice actress with Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. As well as Demon Souls' as Maiden in Black. I have always been here in this nexus. I was here when the Old One awakened, and I will be here when it rests once again. However, at the earliest point in Bloodborne's development history, this was not yet the case. In fact, it only came to be this way after the cast were somewhat shuffled around, having at first recorded dialogue for roles they would not end up playing in the final version. Is someone there? Well, whoever you are, it matters not. I will not die, tarnished as I am. You came here for naught. Be off with you. With this in mind, let's take a look at the plain doll. Not the same one with which we're all quite familiar, but instead one with entirely different dialogue and voiced by an actress who would not play the same role in the final version of the game. Normally, upon first meeting the doll, she gives us very little information with regard to the nature of the hunter's dream, telling us only that we should hunt beasts in pursuit of the echoes of blood. Hello, good hunter. I am a doll, here in this dream to look after you. Honorable hunter, pursue the echoes of blood, and I will channel them into your strength. You will hunt beasts, and I will be here for you to embolden your sickly spirit. In a much earlier version of this interaction, the doll has a dramatically different way of introducing us to this refuge, instead referring to it as the Nightmare. Hello, ailing one. This is a nightmare, a dream of the sick, of those on death's doorstep. Minds ravaged by disease, but still clinging to life. This is where they come. Does that not describe yourself? Dead, but with renewed life in this nightmare. Or perhaps your life before was the bad dream. Who can recall? Madness is, after all, a fog. It is noteworthy that throughout, she mentions the concept of the hunter suffering from an ailment, an abandoned concept from an earlier time in Bloodborne's development. We can ask her to speak further here, and she will mention something analogous to seeking blood echoes, but with vastly different terminology. Ailing one, pursue a deeper madness, and I will make it your medicine. I am here for you to embolden your sickly spirit. During this first encounter, the doll will normally also speak about the messengers, creatures with whom we have already had some interaction up to this point. Ah, the little ones, inhabitants of the dream. They find hunters like yourself, worship and serve them. Speak words they do not, but still, Aren't they sweet? Although the wording itself is quite different, the older version of this particular piece of dialogue remains otherwise the same. The tiny ones are dwellers of this dream. They serve you in admiration of the sick ones. They cannot speak, but are so very quaint. While continuing to speak with the doll, we can choose to channel blood echoes and level up each time having her recite a short speech. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. This too is delivered somewhat differently in a far earlier version of her script. Now let madness be your medicine. Let me stand close. Don't peek. After we finish speaking with the doll, she says a few words upon our departure. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. 
Once again, we can compare to the unused take for a slightly different farewell. Goodbye, ailing one. May you wake without harm. Whenever we return to the hunter's dream, the doll will typically welcome us once again. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? And looking back to the original version, the phrasing in this situation is again somewhat changed. Hello again, ailing one. How did you find the waking world? Proceeding further through the story, once the hunter has reached Erden Chapel, the doll will have a little more to say about the tombstones scattered throughout the dream. Over time, countless hunters have visited this dream. The graves here stand in their memory. It all seems so long ago now. This too occurs in the older take, but of course with different wording throughout. Most visitors to this nightmare have died. The remains of their spirits sleep within these tombstones. It all seems so long ago now. Sometime later, after the hunter has learned the Bergenworth adage, the doll speaks about the nature of creators and a love for their creations. Hunters have told me about the church, about the gods and their love. But do the gods love their creations? I am a doll created by you humans. Would you ever think to love me? Of course. I do love you. Isn't that how you've made me? While this is mostly similar in the unused version of this dialogue, she begins speaking here as if the hunter has actually posed a question about love, rather than bringing up the subject of her own accord. What you say is rather strange. The gods dote not upon their creations. I am a doll, created by you humans. Why should you bestow love upon me? Of course. I do love you, for that is how you have made me. One of the more well-hidden secrets in Bloodborne is the old abandoned workshop, where we not only find an inanimate copy of the doll in the waking world, but also a small hair ornament which seems somewhat related to her. After taking this item, we can return to the refuge and offer it to the doll, to which she has quite the reaction. What? What is this? I can't remember. Not a thing, only I feel. A yearning, something I never felt before. What's happening to me? <gasps> Tell me, Hunter. Could this be joy? Ah. <sighs> now let's take a look at how this dialogue differs in her original performance. Ooh. What? What is this? I can't remember. Not a thing. Only... I feel a yearning. Something I've never felt before. What's happening to me? Oh, I thank you, ailing one. That was most pleasant. Of course, in the retail version of Bloodborne, the doll is a somewhat more complex character than what we've seen up to this point, speaking about German from time to time and elaborating upon some events around his story progression. But there are no such lines at this earlier point in the game's development. German is never mentioned at all. What we've seen here so far constitutes the majority of her dialogue that was originally recorded for the character, except for one thing. There is a small piece of cut content in Bloodborne. The original intention was that we could kill the doll, and if we did so, she would actually remain dead, her lifeless body continuing to offer the ability to channel blood echoes, but she would never recover or speak to us again from that point onwards. This of course isn't the case in the final version, however here I have restored her finished dialogue that was once planned to be delivered when she was attacked. I must have displeased you. Go on. Shut me down. Even so, this vessel will remain in your service. So have no fear. 
For this cut piece of dialogue, there also exists an older take, which similarly, of course, went unused in the final version. I must have displeased you. Go on. Dispose of me. Even so, this vessel will remain in your service. So, have no fear. And with that done, we've heard all of the original voice work that was recorded for the doll before they settled upon which actors and actresses would be assigned to the roles which they would eventually play in the finished version of Bloodborne. And while it's likely that the script for this dialogue was always intended to only be for placeholder purposes early in development, it's still quite interesting to hear some of the nuanced differences throughout. I hope you managed to find this a little interesting, as it's always a treat to see something from an earlier point in Bloodborne's history. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to let me know by hitting the like button or maybe leaving a friendly comment below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, as I have so much more to show you from Bloodborne that has never been seen before. You can find more ways to follow and support my work in the description, and either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.